Greetings and salutations. Today we are going to be going over the basic digestive system of cattle. So pretty much we're going to be finding out when your cow, or the cows you see flying down the highway, are eating grass, what happens? Where does it go? What does it do? And all that stuff. So we're going to start with just a quick explanation of the digestive system and then I will be going into um, the stomach more um, in depth the stomach compartments and just what they do and how they function so uh, what we have our esophagus here then we're just gonna draw this guy and draw her stomach so we have our reticulum which is this little part then your rumen is all of this space right here you have your omasum, which is a cute little compartment, and then your abomasum, which finishes off the stomach. And that can go out here and make a little, uh oh, make a little room. Excuse you, Mr. Erase Marker, thank you. There we go. Goes out here through the small large intestine, and then the cecum as well, um, until it gets out. So we're going to have this. There we go. So this is your basic quick sketch of kind of what a digestive system of cattle are going to look like. So you're going to start with um, once your cow is eating grass, I grabbed the wrong marker. There you go. So you eat some grass. Look at that. Nice and beautiful. She has a mustache now. And the first stomach compartment that this is going to go into is your reticulum, which is this little guy. From there, so we'll do a little one. That's a great one. <laughs> From the reticulum, the feed will go into the rumen, which is step number two. Then after the rumen, it's going to go uh, back up through the esophagus, and it's actually going to be chewed as cud. So this is kind of like a 2.5 in a way, or step three, depends on how you want to count it. Uh, so it goes, you know, back up to be chewed as cud, and then when it's swallowed for a second time, it'll go into the omasum, and then once the feed is done the omasum, it'll go into the abomasum, which is step four of our compartments, and then through there it'll leave through a small and large intestine, and come out as a nice fertilizer. So we're going to stop there, and I am going to go more in depth over each of the stomach compartments, how they function, and what they do. So after your grass is chewed and goes through the esophagus, the first part of the stomach that it's going to go to, the first compartment, is called the reticulum. So that's going to be, if you have your stomach here, your esophagus there, that's going to be like this little pocket that's right over here. And then we'll do the rest of it just so you have a reference. That's kind of close to what it looks like. Um, and we'll close that off. So your reticulum, um, the walls of it have a honeycomb kind of shape that protrudes from it. And this acts as a trap to catch foreign objects or materials that shouldn't be floating around in a digestive system. So these are things that uh, cattle are going to pick up while they're grazing or maybe things that accidentally get um, into their feed, so that can be anything like mainly metals that don't belong there, so screws, that kind of looks like a screw, oh not a screw, that's a nail, screws would be something like this, one, two, three, four, and then they end like that. Oh, you can't even see that glare, I thought I got rid of that. Anyway, so those are going to be things like uh, screws, nails, uh, maybe some fencing that got left behind, just really things that are out in a field that really don't belong there. Um, and so these things are going to get caught up by the honeycombs and are going to be trapped there. And that prevents them from traveling throughout the rest of the digestive system uh, so that they don't harm or injure your, cat, your cow. So I'll put a couple little dudes in there kind of lonely. You never have to worry because they have about 50 million of these little dudes hanging out with them in their stomachs. Um, so that's pretty cool I think. And that's the base for that. So once your cow is done chewing their cud, instead of the feed going back into the reticulum, 
It's actually going to go into the omasum, which is a smaller compartment uh, within the stomach. And we'll just put the abomasum there for reference. So, um, the omasum is one of the seven compartments that actually does not secrete any enzymes. Um, so the other, the rumen and I believe also the reticulum, do secrete enzymes to help, like, just break things down, get things moving. Um, uh, omasum isn't one of those. Um, their main job is just to reduce the particle size. So, after all that chewing, you know, grass is still pretty big, it's pretty thick, and so it'll just sit there while it's being digested and just get a little smaller to help with that digestive process. So your fourth compartment of the stomach is called the abomasum, and this is also known as the true stomach. Um, this actually has um, your glandular walls, which um, secrete the enzymes. Your other stomachs do secrete enzymes, but they just do it in a different way. So how this abomasum, how it's kind of modeled, we're just going to do him by himself right here, is actually very similar to non-ruminant animals. Um, just the one compartment alone. So he would be uh, similar to like a pig or people. Those are my two biggest non-ruminant examples. Uh, we'll do a little scribbles in here so you know this is the abomasum. And so this is the true stomach, what they call it. And so this is going to be the last uh, part of the stomach that your feet is going to go through before it leaves and goes through the small intestine and large intestine. And this is when it's mostly digested, and then it'll go, and nutrients are going to be absorbed while they're going through the small and large intestine. Um, but this is pretty much where your feed is done. Um, and that is your four compartments. So we'll do a quick review, and then we'll go over. So let's review real quick. Your first compartment of the stomach is your reticulum, which... It's just a little part right here. This is for nails and any other like metals or foreign components that don't belong in a stomach. Things that are gonna hurt cattle when they if they eat them or get ingested. Um, things like these can really can pierce stomach walls and really cause a lot of problems if they end up going through the rest of the digestive system, which is why we have the honeycomb. If you guys remember that, the honeycomb structure to keep them from piercing through anything or getting them caught up in the rest of the digestive system. And we'll do one more little thing here to make me feel better. There we go. And we'll do one more. Yeah, okay. Once your foreign materials are caught up in the reticulum, they'll move through the rumen. And that is your storage. Feed is going to be stored there while your cow is grazing and later it'll be regurgitated back up as cud and once it goes through as cud and we're going to pause before I continue this is also where you have all the little microbes living in your cow they're helping with digestion uh, vitamins amino acids um, fiber all that good stuff. So with the fiber, you have like the cellulose and all that. Um, so can't forget about those guys. They're they're important little little dudes. So once your feed gets regurgitated back up and chewed as cud, it's gonna go into the omasum, which is our third compartment. Now this omasum is job is just to reduce the particle size of the feed, make it smaller, make it more digestible, so that it can pass through and be absorbed by our cow. Our final um, compartment is the abomasum. Our true stomach is what it's called. And he's the final stop before feed goes into the small and large intestine and then out the rear end and all that good stuff. So by now, feed is completely digested and is ready to be absorbed when it gets to, as it goes through the small and large intestine as well as the cecum. Um, it's ready to be absorbed by the body and all that good nutrients, which is so great for our cow. Now, we're going to pause here and go over feeds. 
So for this feed section, I'm just going to be doing a quick overview of types of feeds that are going to be going into these animals. This by no means covers everything and is just a general, a general overview so you guys can get an idea of what we're working with. So um, one of your biggest things are going to be forages and roughages. And sometimes, um, while these are technically different class classifications, um, you can have feeds that are both um, certain ones. You're also going to be dealing with a lot of um, high energy feeds, or we'll just do energy. Erase, 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 erase. Uh, you're going to have like energy feeds, which most popular one is corn and different types of processed corn so you know you're not going to feed a cow a regular corn on the cob uh, they're going to be processed or dried and put into as grain um, you also have it in the forms of silage which is when you just chop up the entire like corn plant uh, here we can do a little picture of some corn that's totally how it looks uh, that's when you chop up the entire plant and you ferment it for an, a certain amount of time and it becomes silage. Uh, you have your protein feeds which um, can be soybean meal, uh, linseed oil, and um, linseed, and cottonseed as well. These are high protein feeds. Then you also have um, your smaller requirements, which are minerals. Minerals. <laughs> your uh, more popular minerals that you guys are probably familiar with are salt blocks, uh, which are like little or like salt licks or like little boxes or sometimes like little circles or cubes or whatever that um, cattle or horses can go over to get some extra salt. Uh, we'll put an S there for salt. But you also have things like calcium um, supplements, Duke and phosphorus. Those are some of your uh, like smaller ones, but are still like major minerals um, for smaller requirements. Uh, to fix any um, supplement issues, you can feed like dicalcium phosphate. Uh, I think limestone also supplies uh, minerals as well and just some overall things. Now for minerals, uh, because they're fed as supplements, you're getting a very small amount. Um, and so those are going to be, when you're working with percentages of a whole feed, they're going to be like a point, typically like a point twelve percent. Um, nope, that's lower than that. Um, less than like, less than point one percent, I would say. Depending on what you're working with and the specific requir requirements for that animal. But this is what you're basically work with, working with. You have your grazing, where's my green? You have your grazing feeds and your fiber. You have your energy, which is your calories also. Your protein and then your minerals, which are your vitamins also. Minerals and vitamins. So this sums up my digestion video over the digestive system of cattle. I really enjoyed this and I hope you did too.